So we're going to kick start this demo with a pitch, which gives you more insight into who you're speaking to and the product as a whole. So our mission is to craft SQ solutions that proactively help agencies like you focus on what matters. And we can only achieve this mission by listening to our family of agencies, which allows us to constantly improve the product and streamline your processes, making you more effective and more efficient. So why make the switch? Well, fresh desktop and mobile ranks every 24 hours. We have an SLA to call these ranks for ATM, whatever location you are in. From day one, we track and store all the competitor data. You can track and analyze any competitor you like. Created on restricted keyword research tools to help you get the best quality terms. So free, unlimited pitching campaigns that are great for new business proposals. So if you win the client, transform it into a regular campaign with daily rank tracking. Flexible pricing on your track keywords and websites. So no fixed plans, no contracts, no waste, just pricing that automatically updates as you scale as an agency. Our API is completely unrestricted and you have the ability to export as much data as you like. This includes being able to seamlessly connect your SEO monitor data to your Google Data Studio reports. Have the ability to set up as many users as you like in the platform for no additional cost. So we always archive your data. You own the data, so it's up to you if you want to delete it. Customer service have an SLA to respond to any of your queries within 15 minutes. And lastly, if you choose to sign up, you have a dedicated account manager that will oversee the migration, onboarding, and any team trainings. So first and foremost, we're an SEO platform, the Rank Tracker being our core product. And we try to create the best Rank Tracker in the world. And the rest are a set of products that are there to assist you in your work and are all connected within the main product. So we have SEO research. So a created keyword database that you can use without any restriction through the interface, API or exports. Organic traffic. So bringing together the organic traffic data from GA and GSE clips to help you segment the brand or non-brand organic traffic. SEO forecasting. So the most reliable way to predict the future business results based on a determined SEO goal. And lastly, reporting and client management. So improving your own agency processes through the ability to report pitch and track performance. Crucially, these are all interconnected within your own agency processes. Now let's jump in to the main rank tracker demo. And first, we're going to look at the keyword level data. And we'll start with the SERP data. So the SERP data, well, this consists of all the SERP features. And we compute the CTR metric based on the mix of SERP features to define the percentage of clips that end up landing on the organic search results. So you'll see that these SERPs, well, they consume the clicks that would naturally go from the search volume. So the percentage of search volume that end up clicking on the organic search results. So this means that instead of looking at 135,000 searches, we're actually looking at 8% of this number due to particular search features. So it completely changes the way that you look and analyze your keywords. We're able to work this out by taking our rank tracking data, millions of it, and mashing it together with your Google Search Console data, giving you this impact. With the search volume data, well, we take this from Google Keyword Planner. And it goes hand in hand with the year over year trend by computing the last month versus the same month for the previous year. Now you're going to use the search volume data to plan for the future. And the year over year trend is going to help calibrate your expectation against the average 12 month search volume. So for example, you might see a keyword with really low search volume, but its year over year trend has gone up by nine times. So these insights, this can give you a competitive advantage allows you to prioritize the keywords that you start working with. But you might also see a keyword with high search volume, but the year over year trend is down by nearly 50%, just like in this example. So you might not want to start working with this keyword straight away. With the ranking data, well, we take the rank for the last day in the selected time frame and give you any trend within that period alongside the all-time best ranks, so the best the rank's ever been. And then you have the landing page information. So where there's a problem with the landing page, this is going to be signaled with an exclamation mark. And then we have opportunity score. And this metric simply does the work for you. And it's heavily influenced by the difficulty metric, which measures the difficulty of moving your website into the top 10 for any keyword. We compute this metric based on the topical authority of your landing page compared with those ahead of you and its keyword and topic targeting. 
We also factor in the SERP data, search data and ranking data, which results in one single metric opportunity score, taking values from 0 to 10, where 10 be the best keywords to focus on given the upside of reaching the top versus the difficulty of getting there. See, if you were to put your hand over the opportunity score and ask your client what are the best keywords to focus on, it's difficult to answer because there are thousands of keywords. But opportunity score allows you to automatically sort your keywords by opportunity to generate traffic once in the top three versus the difficulty of moving them into the top 10. So if you already rank in position number one, well, there's, there's no opportunity there. If you have high difficulty, even if the keyword has high search volume, it may not be the first keyword to focus on considering the time and effort it will take to move that keyword into the top 10. Your website may simply not be ready to rank for it yet. But with difficulty, difficulty is a dynamic metric. So the more you optimize your website, the more some of the hard difficulty keywords become medium or easy. So it's best to focus on keywords where you can drive the most impact in the short or medium term. Just like in this example here, where we can see high traffic opportunity once in the top three, but also SEO difficulty, that it's very easy to move this keyword into the top 10 because there are no pages ahead of us with a higher authority. Now we finish with that, it's time to click on the keyword, which will show you the keyword sidebar. So you can see the overview for the keyword, the performance over the track time period, which is the time period which you set in the calendar timeframe, and then you have the top 100 competitors. So looking at this, you can actually see the SERP data, so who you're competing with for clicks and whether you feature on the SERP, while also showing you landing page information and the opportunity score. And then you have the performance over the track time period over mobile and desktop, while also showing you any key changes which might have influenced the rankings. This allows you to correlate any significant increases or drops in ranking. Then if you click on competition, so this will show you the top 100 competitors. So it shows you actually the best landing page that's ranking on the SERP. So you have the rank, the trend, the ranking URL, and then any other similar ranking keywords that that website is ranking for. So you can come in here and start tracking these straight away. Now we've done with that, it's time to show you the analysis module. So this is where you can see your keywords enriched with the organic traffic data. So this will include like any traffic data for time tracked. We're able to show you key metrics such as sessions, goals, and revenue. We're able to give you this data by connecting through the connection of your Google search console and Google Analytics. Once this is processed, the landing page data for analytics will be distributed on the keywords in Google Search Console. In the same way that we explore the data at keyword level, the same data is aggregated at group level for your keywords. So as we can see here with the SERP data, for this amount of keywords, only 60% of users are clicking on the organic search results from a search volume opportunity of 2.6 million. So if only 60% are clicking on the organic search results, this actually completely changes the way we look at the search volume opportunity on offer. We're also able to show you any SERP features which are appearing um, for this list of keywords and whether your website features or not. With the search volume data, well, at group level, this is the sum of the search volume data on your list of keywords, but we never duplicate them. And it's a process where we aggregate close variations under the same search volume, exactly like Google Ads does it just like we can see in this example here. So if the rank tracker wasn't going to do this, if it was just going to show the same aggregated search volume for each variation, then it would duplicate it at group level, giving you a misleading search volume. With the visibility metric, so this isn't just a top stat, you can actually also see it in the chart here. And visibility, well, this is the equivalent of rank, but for group tracking. So process is an impression share, which means we look at ranks in search volume. So the rank of the keyword with a higher search volume will impact this metric more, than a keyword with a lower search volume. So think about it as if your website would rank in position one on the entire list of keywords, the visibility would be 100%. If their website was to rank outside of page two, then it would be 0%. So the visibility metric doesn't just work as a reliable ranking trend indicator at a keyword list level. It's also a good metric to understand how much growth opportunity is left on, left on, your, key, on your keywords. But any visibility metric though has its quirks. However, we've tackled them all, and here's how. So any keyword list level performance metric would change when changing the keywords in the list. In order to do that, when we process the trend value, um, so not the chart, we only take into account keywords that were tracked for the entire selected timeframe. 
So that way, red always means a drop in rankings, while, re while green means an improvement. And when looking at the charts, so when the keyword list changes and affects the visibility metric, a K annotation is automatically added on all the visibility charts so that the user know that it wasn't a performance trend, but actually a keyword list change. The visibility metric is fully transparent since it's always moving up or down. So if especially there's a negative trend, you're want to, going to want to know what happened. And that's why we developed the explainer and the whole product has it, a keyword group campaign level visibility that pinpoints the exact keywords causing the drop in visibility. So in the same way that you can use opportunity score at keyword level, you can also use it at group level to optimize your portfolio of keywords. So able to do this by looking at the group of keywords and assessing its traffic opportunity once in the top three, but also rating its SEO difficulty. So the difficulty of moving this group of keywords into the top 10. This metric is very useful for working out which keyword groups to focus on next in terms of optimizing. So for example, here we can see a weak group based on the traffic opportunity and SEO difficulty. But if we look at this keyword group, we might decide to focus prioritizing this one instead as it's one of the top keyword groups to focus on, considering its traffic opportunity once in the top three and the SEO difficulty of moving it into the top 10. You can also use the keyword sidebar to manually add a group. So this is where you have the group name and you just manually add all of your keywords. And then we have the smart groups. So these are groups which are automatically set up by filtering criteria in the platform. And lastly, we have folders. So with folders, this is where your all of your keyword groups under the folder and aggregate any groups under within the folder. And lastly, editing has never been easier with edit mode, which allows you to seamlessly manage any, all of your keywords and your groups. It's now time to move on to the competition. So you'll see that we track and store the 100 ranking pages on your track keywords every day. There is no cost limitation for how many competitors you track. And this means we can show you any ranks or trends in the timeframe alongside hidden landing page information. And then you can use the arrows to navigate horizontally and also be able to filter the data in any way you like. You can also click on this button to open the competitor sidebar. This allows you to identify your top competitors so you can see who is more visible on your list of keywords, all ordered by visibility to create from thousands of competitors. Of course, you can also add competitors manually and there's no cost limitation for how many competitors you can analyze as they're already being tracked. So you can add or remove them as you need. The data is here, stored in the platform and ready to be analyzed at any moment. You can also explore the trend by looking at the visibility metric. So you can see who has the biggest share of voice within your industry or category, as well as its trend over the selected time frame. And you also have the ability to switch between mobile and desktop visibility from the sidebar. This section is also integrated with Website Explorer. So you can see all of your competitors ranking keywords. Perfect for the SEO gap analysis. So it's now time to go through automatic keyword categorization. And the product is incredibly proactive. So it's not just looking at ranks. The rank tracker is constantly looking at your data and continues to enhance the information it has on your keywords. So for example, when the rank tracker notices a keyword has high seasonality, but low search volume in other months, it's going to autom automatically add a highly seasonal label. And this label has three forms. So in peak season, season approaching, and out of season. And depending on where the present moment is relative to the peak season, usually one to three months. We also have the page issues detection feature, which helps you spot the keywords where your website has landing page or the keyword relevant issues that prevent it from ranking well. And these issues can only be detected by a rank tracker and completes complements your technical analysis tools. So we're able to report on missing landing pages, which is particularly useful for fueling new content creation ideas. So we can see in this example that this keyword has a missing relevant landing page. And we're able to do this by performing an automatic second crawl for this feature. So doing a site search for the track site with the associated keyword, and if no relevant result 
then it's marked as missing. We're also able to show you page cannibalization issues. So this is where the landing page has changed multiple times in the selected time frame. So you can actually use the performance tab to correlate page changes with ranking pages. So you can easily identify the best landing page and then perform the fix for the cannibalization issue. So with warnings on misleading keywords, this is a feature of the rank tracker that detects a few types of keywords that could be misleading for the user when they're added to the campaign. So firstly, we have brand of others. So these are navigational keywords towards other websites. So these keywords usually have high search volume for which your website will unlikely rank on. We also have irrelevant keywords. So these are keywords where are searched for by your users that probably won't find what they're looking for on the track website. You should consider removing them as they'll influence the group level metrics. And the higher the search volume gets, the more misleading it can be. This also only works well when the three competitors that you've set up are true direct competitors because the algorithm is based on the hypothesis and none of your key competitors ranking in the top 20 on the keyword, then it might not be relevant for your website. So with highly localized keywords, these are keywords that have different organic search results based on the location the search was performed from. So you should be aware of them as they usually have high search for you, but don't consider that your website actually ranks in position number 10 on all of these searches, but actually it's only on a fraction of them. And you also can't hope to rank that well on this keyword in any location. So we're able to do this by performing a, second, a secondary search from a different location and then comparing the organic results to identify these keywords, which is a huge effort and cost on our side, just to help you understand the context of, of these keywords. It's best to keep them in city level campaigns or locations in a multi-location campaign just like here. Automatic and manual annotations, these are key annotations on the chart of internal or external events that might affect the metrics. So manual annotations could be used when you launch a new website or you have like a new fix, which needs to be remembered. And then automatic annotations, well, these are automatically added by SEO monitor. So these could include, um, these could include a Google algorithm change, which allows you to correlate your SEO performance with Google algorithm updates. And then we also have when new keywords are added. So, so this is when you've added new keywords and then we'll automatically let you know. So you can correlate any non-performance changes with the visibility. And then lastly, we have the re-aggregation of close variations. So this is where there'll be a re-aggregation in Google, in Google Ads, the close variations, which may cause a significant change in the search volume. So this allows you to then correlate any significant changes in search volume with the visibility metric. And lastly, we have the Google Sheets add-on. So this allows you to pull your SEO campaign data into Google Sheets with SEO Monitor's add-on. So there's no need to worry about formatting CSV files anymore. For example, sometimes you might want to further process the data from the platform in spreadsheets or run scheduled reports. So SEO can only be influenced by your non-brand organic traffic. And this is because for your brand keywords, navigational queries towards your client's websites, we typically rank number one for these already. This is a form of direct traffic anyway, driven by a customer loyalty and brand awareness. So Google tends to react to these branded queries and navigational queries towards other websites by displaying full site links, just like we can see in the example here. The issue is that in Google Analytics, SEOs can't measure the non-branded segment anymore for many years now because they don't have access to the keyword data. The SEO monitor is able to reveal the not provided traffic information and also redistribute the organic visits and corresponding conversions and transactions back to the keywords that generated them. Crucially, this data is integrated with the rank tracker so you're able to quickly dive in and basically expand your SEO campaign with new keyword opportunities. So you might not actually be tracking these keywords. And this is really important because these are keywords that are already driving you traffic. So you might want to add them to your campaign and focus on improving them 
or you just might want to monitor their performance. So we're able to do this by pulling data from your analytics via API and then matching it to the keyword data in Google Search Console. So using the landing pages as the connector. So the keywords from Google Search Console are then mapped on the landing pages from analytics, proportional to the clicks they generate. For the purpose of this demo, we're just using dummy data. So this data is also summed up in the top stats and plotted over time in the chart. And you're able to uh, use the top stats to compare key client metrics, such as sessions, goals, bounce rate, conversion rate, and revenue. So this data is um, the data that's generated in the selected timeframe. And we're also able to show you the trend against the equivalent time period. So moving on to the brand and non-brand traffic segmentation, well, we've separated the keywords into two buckets. So branded and non-branded. And well, for your branded keywords, well, these are labeled and identified automatically through the brand rule set up in, um, in the campaign setup. And other low volume brand variations like misspellings can be found and marked as brand manually through the dedicated brand on brand calibration interface. This allows you to easily measure the SEO, the business results generated via SEO performance separate from the direct traffic coming through Google search. You can also use the default segments to access the metrics that you want to plot on the chart. And you can compare these against other key metrics, such as forecasted sessions, conversions, and revenue, which will only be available if you've already set up a forecast. But we can show you how to do that later. And then we have the custom segments. So custom segments help you further segment the organic traffic process via platform based on the unique attributes we provide. So let's say that you want to measure the traffic data coming from a specific uh, part of the website, for example, the blog. You can do this by creating a custom segment in the organic traffic interface, where you can define the attributes of the keywords you want to include in the segment. And once the segment is created, the segmentation, the not provided segmentation system, will repost the traffic data and distribute it into the keywords based on the landing page. The branded and navigational keywords are then marked accordingly for enabling the non-brand organic traffic measurement. You might be familiar with this one from analytics, but this feature helps you easily compare the organic traffic generated over the equivalent timeframe or from the previous year. So you can see one chart on top of the other and how you performed in terms of sessions, conversions, or other key client metrics against any equivalent timeframe. So the SEO forecast product helps you estimate how much additional non-brand organic traffic would be generated if you achieve a specific SEO goal in the next 12 months. The output of this forecast is key in the client pitching process as it helps them see the value of your proposed SEO campaign in terms of business results with a reliable, transparent data-driven model. So what it does, it uses keyword data in the rank tracker, so SERP, search volume and ranking data, along with your desired ranking target to compute how much additional sessions and conversions would be generated if the goal is successfully achieved until the end of the time frame. On top of that, it also estimates how the traffic would look like if the current rankings wouldn't change in a selected time frame, making it possible to set and track an organic traffic objective. Now, the two important dimensions of performance that we focused on are the precision of the model given by the number of variables it uses and the quality of the input data and the transparency of the model, which is all about helping the user understand what data goes in and how it's calculated at every step of the process. Both will surface while exploring the model. It's now time to move on to setting up the SEO goal. Any SEO goal needs a time frame and an estimated progression speed from the current rankings to the targeted ones in the keyword rankings goal. So where the estimated progression speed is simply at what percentage of completion from the current rank to the desired rank you estimate to be each month until the end of the time frame. So for the purpose of this demo, we're going to select all keywords, but using the keyword groups in the rank tracker, you can select on which ones you plan to improve and what top positions you target, whether that's one to three, one to five, or one to 10. Based on their SERP and search volume data, along with the difference in CTR between the current and target rankings, an estimated additional sessions generated 
in the next 12 months by the improvements of rankings alone is calculated. Based on their current and target rankings of the keywords and the website's difficulty to rank in the top for them, a goal chance metric is also computed. You can tweak your SEO goal until you have a good balance between the generated value and how realistic the goal is. So now we can move on to understanding and adjusting the algorithm set. And we're going to start off with explaining the formulas, so additional sessions when achieving the target rank. So to ensure the best possible precision, the calculation is done at a keyword level, taking into account all the attributes. So we have the average CTR for desktop and mobile for SERPs with no SERP features. The impact SERP features have on the amount of searches that end up clicking on the organic search results. And then the average search volume is year over year trend. And then the split between desktop and mobile devices. So with that data, an estimate of additional sessions its keyword will generate once it reaches the target rank can be made. But the performance improvement on the keywords included in the forecast will also have a butterfly effect to other close variations and long tails that are not included in the SEO goal. So using our keyword database and topic aggregation technology, we're able to find these keywords and calculate their impact. Now that we've calculated how many additional sessions each keyword will generate when the target rank will be achieved on the last month of the time frame, we can start by calculating their month by month contribution. So for each month, we'll multiply the calculated additional session when target reached by the estimated progression for the month, multiplied one more time by the search seasonality for the month. So with additional sessions on the um, entire time frame, well, this is just simply the sum of all the additional sessions generated by all keywords over the next 12 months. Even if we believe the best precision is achieved when all the inputs are taken into account, we give you the option to turn them on or turn them off, just like in this example here. And finally, by multiplying the additional sessions with the current conversion rate or a custom targeted future one, the additional conversions are also estimated at this stage. So now time to see it in action. So the detailed calculation allows you to basically, at keyword level, explore your forecast in a dedicated interface, and it includes all the inputs. So you have the keyword attributes and the SEO goal, and then the outputs, so additional sessions, conversions, or revenue estimated to be generated by the keyword itself and by its variations. On top of that, a breakdown by month on each keyword can be explored by opening the additional sessions, explain a sidebar. Along with exposing the formulas, this is as deep as we go in terms of the calculation transparency. That's that with how we do the forecast. Now it's time for the actual output we're looking for. The final output is split into three sections. So you have a sidebar in with the SEO goal, and then you have the forecast configuration. So you're still able to edit the SEO goal and adjust the algorithm. And you also have a detailed month by month forecast. And then the totals for the entire forecast timeframe. The output metrics are the following. So you have the additional sessions, conversions, and revenue. And revenue is simply the additional conversions multiplied by the verge convulsion value from analytics. We multiply the additional sessions with the average CPC at keyword level, then summed up to calculate the equivalent Google Ads budget that would be spent in order to generate the same results. So additional sessions, conversions, revenue. And this would act like an anchor for the created value through your SEO campaign. Of course, the results would stick over a long period of time. So the PPC budget should be put into perspective just for the initial time frame. Now with the output metrics, so the inertial traffic, well, this is in sessions, conversions and revenue, it's the estimated traffic with a hypothesis that your rankings wouldn't change within the forecast time frame. This is of course not how reality works, but we need it to calculate the improved traffic without which we can't set an organic traffic goal and measure against. The ways it is calculated is by extrapolating the past month's non-brand organic traffic with the seasonality of the keywords generating it. And the improved traffic is simply the inertial traffic plus the additional traffic generated by the progress towards our SEO goal. This is a forecast scenario, but you can create a few 
and present, discuss them with the stakeholders. Once a scenario is agreed upon, the next step is to make it an objective, which we'll now move on to. So we won't get into the importance of setting up an achievable objective, but without one, selling your SEO campaign is going to be particularly difficult. The alignment with clients is hard to create and maintain, and the team is missing on clarity and accountability. And while other SEO objectives can be done without a non-brand organic traffic projection, it might lack the connection between the SEO work and the business results. Another important aspect of this approach is that it still offers flexibility in adapting the keyword strategy without changing the agreed objectives. Once an objective is set up, just like in this example here, an objective status will be updated every day based on the actual non-brand organic sessions versus the forecasted ones for the past 30 days. And 100% would mean you are right on track. This status is also included in the agency dashboard and is part of the client health tracking. So it's now time to walk you through the agency dashboard. And this dashboard helps you quickly see all the critical client data in one place from checking the pulse of every campaign, to tracking business health, and to managing reports. So you can find a set of metrics available for each campaign, and also aggregated for the entire portfolio. So we're going to start with going through the overview sidebar. So we can see that the overall visibility and trend section, well, this allows you to analyze the overall visibility of your client portfolio on mobile and desktop or for blended devices. And you can select the time frame, so the last 30 or seven days. And this allows you to understand how each trend changes in time or after an important Google algorithm update. We then have client health. Here you can check the client health by MRR and by campaigns, but note that the health by MRR is displayed only if the MRR data is available for all your campaigns. And next up is objectives. So once you've set your objective in the forecasting module, you can see how you perform against them and you'll know which campaigns are on track, behind or at risk. So you can focus your team's attention and act accordingly. So it'll be green if the campaign is performing well, more than or equal to 100% on target, yellow if the campaign is behind, 50 to 100% on target, and then red if it's at risk, less than 50% on target. With the reports, well, this feature allows you to easily measure the state of your monthly reports across your client portfolio. So you can view the status of last month's reports along with the client feedback, the number of views and open rate on submitted reports. So you can also access the engagement metrics for past reports as well. So it's now time to move on to the campaign level metrics, starting with the MRR health. So this is the monthly retainer for each client campaign, and it helps you prioritize your highest paying clients. It also allows you to see the health of every campaign you manage. And you can understand it with our sidebar breakdown. Subjective so status, visibility trend, report feedback, and year over year search trend. This allows you to deep dive into each metric and have better control over your client's health status. When a client's health changes, you will receive an email directly into your inbox and you can set the up these alerts for your campaigns or all your agency clients. Next up is objectives. So you can view the objectives for each campaign and track your campaign's performance against the estimated target. Clicking on it either sends you to set an objective or it shows additional details such as forecast duration, actual traffic or projected traffic. So with reports, here you can stay on track of your monthly report uploads and the available statuses are pending, overdue, in progress and submitted. So here you can also view the last month's report status, upload reports and share any reports with your clients. You can also get your clients' engagement rates and feedback. So there are two ways that you can submit a report, by uploading an existing PDF file, and then by creating a new report for our Google Slides integration, where you can use a reporting add-on. So once you, once you submit it, you'll receive a short link to share with clients. Via this link, they can see how many times it has been opened or clients have offered feedback. Here's an example of how the report looks. We then have signals insights. So the insights metric helps you identify the most important insights for your campaign, such as opportunities or why they might be performing poorly. And you'll see icons which represent the category of the top insight, along with a count of all insights for each campaign. You can view all the insights for a campaign in the signal sidebar. 
ordered by impact in organic traffic. And here you can also filter insights according to your focus and share them with your client. So it's now time to move on to campaign segments by account manager. This is a campaign level attribute setting, enabling a dedicated view on your assigned campaigns. It also acts as a filter in the agency dashboard. If you have a large team with multiple account managers, this will especially come in handy. As an account manager, it will help you get an overview in your campaigns alone. And the filtered view then shows the corresponding stats in terms of overall campaign visibility, client health, objective status and reporting status, and all on the selected AM's campaigns. Thanks for watching.